Go. Uh, do you think, John, that the proposal there were proposals for funding this in terms of uh, more efficient delivery of health care services to the American public and taxing of the uh, you know the negative things that uh, have a an adverse effect on our health, like the uh, tax on uh, soda, uh, candy, uh, all of the fat foods. Uh, I mean, this is what Alderman Burke talks about here: right. taxing the you know the the uh, the you know carbohydrates that we intake uh, daily. I mean, where is this going in terms of a uh, healthcare system that is already the best in the world? Now yeah. it's costly, but it is already the best healthcare delivery system in the world. The irony is that it's cost and its expense today is driven by bad government policy that put us in the situation in the first place. It's bad government policy that created the so-called health care crisis. There is no health care crisis. What there is is a health insurance crisis and an access to health care crisis and all the barriers to low-cost insurance and to uh, access to health care mm -hmm. are created by the government and so the government's going to come in and fix it. Let's look back, Tony, at Medicaid, Medicare and what their original promises were and how it's actually played out. And in every case, what's happened is the program has exploded in terms of cost. It's way over what the original plan was. And the idea that somehow this time we're going to do it right, uh, given the government's track record, I think is preposterous. Let's look at state programs, whether you want to go to Massachusetts, whether you want to go to the state of Maine, uh, other states all around the country that have tried to do this. Let's look at the state of Illinois. Over the last 10 years, the state of Illinois has raised eligibility for Medicaid from 133% of poverty to 400% of poverty. It becomes a perpetual entitlement from what was originally designed to be a social safety net for the poor to now a benefit for the middle class and sometimes the affluent. A family of four in this state can receive taxpayer-subsidized Medicaid benefits and at an income of $83,000. That's what we're proposing here. It's right. unsustainable. Uh, you know, the McCain proposal, uh, which uh, was debated during the election, uh, was to rescind the tax exemption for some workers who already receive health benefits from their employers. Uh, another one uh, that's being talked about in the Senate now is to tax the uh, employers who are providing health care, those who have payrolls of $500,000 or more. So this is going to affect small businessmen. Uh, 500000 or more in payroll per year is not a whole lot of money if you have a business with seven or eight employees. Uh, and they're talking about slapping new taxes on products that I already indicated, like soft drinks, candy, uh, and also, you know, choosing to slash Medicare benefits on payments that doctors receive. I mean, right. this, this is this is going exactly in the wrong direction. I, I think, Tony, what we have here is pay first or spend first, think later. And right. usually we don't ever get around to the thinking part. But what John is saying is absolutely true. If government would sit down and think about the market-oriented steps it could take to liberate the insurance companies to deliver a wide range of products, insurance products, for people of all income levels, people of all family situations. And then it looked at the eligibility situation and said, who is it that cannot buy insurance, health insurance? How can we empower them right. to make their choice in this environment? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're going to impose something from the top down, and say, oh, by the way, you on the bottom on whom we're imposing, you're going to have to pay for this, then what you're going to end up with is socialized medicine. How can the private sector compete against government-provided health care insurance? We're going to find out from Ford Motor Company, which is trying to compete against General Motors, also right. known as Government Motors. The, right. the answer is, Tony, they can't. And the perfect example of what I was alluding to earlier about the eligibility, the run-up, and the, uh, how much income you can have here in Illinois to 400% of poverty, here's what's happened. In 1998, there were 1.7 million people receiving Medicaid benefits. Today, there's 2.7 million people. So we've got a million more people getting taxpayer subsidized. Where have they come from? Have we eliminated our uninsured, which is the whole point of this whole program, is to help the 47 million people who are uninsured? Absolutely not. The rate of uninsured is almost identical. It's changed by about half a point, roughly 12 to 12.5 percent of our population, population today is still uninsured. All those people came from private insurance and they migrated to government subsidized, taxpayer subsidized, I should say, uh, health insurance through the Medicaid program. That is unsustainable. What about the energy uh, program that the President, has, President Obama and his administration has proposed and the effect that it will have on the state of Illinois? Uh, we have a, a, an industry that has grown around biofuels here and uh, you know we are uh, in a situation now where they're talking about uh, focus on, for example, in addition to uh, re 
forming or restructuring General Motors and Chrysler to provide for manufacturing of smaller automobiles. Mm -hmm. I saw a great one. It says uh, Obama Mobile, uh, which had two teleprompters for rear view mirrors. <laughs> and it was like a little box with two seater on there. But uh, we are now. Uh, they're, they're going back to some Soviet cars <laughs> of the 1970s. They want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to bring those over here because that basically right. fits the profile of what the radical environmentalists. Uh, so, in addition to having this kind of uh, government control of the healthcare, where uh, the private health care providers are going to be negatively affected and driven out of the marketplace. You have the government now going into the auto manufacturing. Right. You can have government now uh, providing for a, uh, a tax on all fuels, gas, natural gas in particular, and others to finance this restructuring of the energy delivery systems in the United States. I mean, this is a kind of a, a situation that in the short term, before these systems are put into place for natural gas delivery for automobile or you know other uses, is going to cause a huge drive up in electrical rates and in, in uh, natural gas rates, and people are already overtaxed by income taxes, gasoline taxes, sales taxes are going to have an additional utility tax that they're going to have to and pay. And Tony, who does that hurt the most? It the hurts the poor and working class the most. Definitely. It hurts them in multiple ways. It hurts them in terms of their own ability to pay those a higher cost. It, it puts at risk their ability to buy groceries. It puts at risk their ability to be mobile, to go find a job when jobs are scarce. Uh, it puts at risk the entrepreneur who might hire that person, their ability to add another job because they're paying all these extra taxes. This is why states that take these states and or countries like the Europeans who take these policies and put them into practice are slow growth, low job creation. The way you create jobs is not by filling potholes. When you hire somebody to fill a pothole or build a bridge, it has an effect for that person's job for a short period of time. But when the private sector hires somebody to build a better widget, and that better widget is then sold to hundreds of companies, mm -hmm. and they become more efficient in turn, you propagate and have a multiplier effect of job creation. And we, that uh, is the key thing that people don't understand. Uh, we again want to uh, remind our viewers that uh, if they want more information about any of these topics to please uh, give us a call at 773-735-1700 or go to our website parika.com